In a world where a growing number of people self-identify as atheists, agnostics, call themselves spiritual, or have no particular faith belief at all, not to mention many of us who struggle with understanding who God truly is, Pastor John Mark Comer of Bridgetown Church in Portland, Oregon, is asking you before writing off a relationship with God, do you really know who he is? Because you might be surprised. Welcome, John Mark. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So when you hear as a pastor of a growing number of people kind of writing off God, what does that say to you? Yeah, I mean, I think there are, there are lots of reasons for that. There's yeah. no simple answer. Um, I think there's everything from hypocrisy in the mm -hmm. church, which of course is often magnified by cultural voices, but is still a legitimate issue. There's secularism just over the last few hundred years in the Western world, this kind of intermingling of faith and science and reason and the enlightenment and all of this stuff mm -hmm. that has secularized the world, making faith more and more difficult for people. There's globalization, so now we're exposed to different faith traditions and different types of people from all over the world. And so I think it's really disorienting. And overall, our culture has just moved away from any sense of authority. It's mm -hmm. kind of built out of reaction against authority to mm -hmm. Europe and such, particular in Canada and North America. And so I think a lot of people just feel lost in the confusion of that. Yet what's encouraging to me is I think that story is starting to break down. Mm -hmm. The secular story is just working for less and less people mm -hmm. and the cracks in the pavement are starting to show. So even though there's on one hand less people believing in God, I see feel like there's more people coming back to God than ever before. So do you feel like it's not a rejection of God, it's more a rejection of his people? Yeah, I and mean, there's definitely truth in that, you yeah. know, and that depends on your what kind of culture you grow up in. But there's a lot of people that are reacting against a God that all the prophets of the Bible are reacting against, too. It's a, that's a misnomer. That's a misconception built by hypocrisy and human arrogance and imperialism. And what they're reacting against is often things that I think Jesus would react against, mm. too. But unfortunately, the baby is thrown out with the <laughs> bathwater, you know. So what led you to Jesus? You know, I'm a second generation follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. My dad came to faith in the 70s out of a rock band and became a pastor. Really? So I'm a second generation yeah, pastor. Band. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So kind of the full gamut switch. So I grew up in the faith and I think, you know, been following Jesus as long as I can remember. Jesus tells this story that often Christians call the story of the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. It's actually the story of the prodigal sons. There's two sons mm -hmm. in the story. One is the older brother who's the religious, good, moral, uptight, jerk <laughs> and the other is the kind of wild uh, licentious you know child and I'm the older brother in that story you know and, which is actually people don't realize that's who Jesus was talking to in that story he was talking to the Pharisees these religious conservatives that had lost the heart of God so that's kind of my story and then you know I grew up in a kind of suburban cloistered son of a pastor kind of environment and then moved into a post-Christian urban secular city and it's hundred and eighty degrees removed and so my story I think was um, about kind of coming back to my faith again and the sense of rediscovering my faith and realizing which pieces it were, were cultural hangovers from a past that I needed to eject and which were the core vibrant pieces that I needed to cling to. And when you were going through that search, finding out who God truly is. Yes. Who is God to you? Who's God to John Mark Comer? Yeah, well, the shortest way to answer that is um, Jesus. You know, God is Jesus-like in that sense. And for me, Jesus is the expression and the experience of God mm -hmm. that I choose to order my life around following. Mm -hmm. And so motivation for writing this great brand new book, God Has a Name. And you talk about the fact that so many of us have given God different characteristics. Yes. And while God has created us, we've almost created this other idea of this, who God is. Yes, this, yes, exactly. Like, shockingly, God looks a lot like you know, we think he should be. Yeah. Um, there's a New Testament scholar by the name of Scott McKnight who does an annual class for university students on Jesus. Mm. And he starts his class with a survey of, you know, um, what do you think God is like? And they ask all these questions. I said, what do you think Jesus is like? What all these, all these questions? Is he this way? Is he that way? How would he vote on this? And then he gives them a second survey with the same questions reworded. Okay. And it's about them. Like, yeah. what do you like? And he, t he tells that every year, 90% of the answers are exactly the same. And the reality is we often construct this image of God in our mind that is 
more a figment of our imagination. Mm. And what you believe about God is incredibly important. Mm. And so this is not, people want to write that off as, oh, it's just theology, that's just detail, or oh, everywhere goes the same place. And we forget, no, I mean, A.W. Tozer, who was a mid-century writer, spent quite a bit of time in Canada. Mm -hmm. He, I think, so wisely said, what comes to mind when you think about God is the most important thing about you. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, your vision of God in your mind's eye, by that I mean like who you think God is like character-wise, yeah. personality-wise, what does he value? What's his moral system? What's his personality? What's, how does he relate or not relate? Is he involved in our life or aloof and distant? Is he kind or mean? Yeah. It will shape not only your religious view, it will shape the kind of person that you become. Mm. If you think God is racist and homophobic and whatever, then you are going to use that false image of God to justify your own heart behavior. If you think God is just really chill and morally elastic and just kind of go with the flow and just drinks decaf and you know, whatever, <laughs> that's gonna shape who you become. And we often forget that from the terrorist bomber to the abortion shooter to the you know hardcore passionate prayer, like people do what they do because of what they believe about mm. God. And so what we believe about God matters because it shapes who we do and don't become. Awesome. Well, we are going to take a quick break. But when we return, John Mark is going to share with us what God reveals about himself and who he really is. Stay with us.